Pepper says you are too blessed to be stressed. So don't worry about back to school supply shopping. Heck, you got half of it in your basement anyway. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to Hoarder's Heart. My name is Miss Hart and I am a recovering hoarder. I have hoarding disorder and I used to be a level four hoarder, now I'm a two. <laughs> and on this channel, I share my mental struggles and the emotions and the attachments and why this stuff makes me feel so secure when the world seems crazy. <laughs> and on this episode, I'm going to be sharing about back to school um, shopping and also how inflation is triggering my hoarding I can feel that as the inflation is on the rise and they're saying it's like a nine percent and you can really start to see it at the pump and also at your grocery I can feel my hoarding starting to be triggered but we've done so much recovery work that I have found some tools that are working for me and I wanted to share it with all of you and I also feel like the more that we talk about it and the more that we have an open conversation about it the better we'll feel heal and encourage each other so without further ado let's get started so the first thing I'm going to do is recognize that my hoarding is triggered by fear normally associated with past experience that triggered that fear and to calm my fears and my nervous system so I'm not triggered to hoard I have to recognize the truth and the truth is that both Brandon and Tyler can reuse their backpacks because we bought a better quality one it lasts more than one school year and these are still in great shape so we will use them again and both of their pencil pouches are in perfect condition so I don't have to rebuy them they can use them this year too. What I'm trying to do is self-soothe and keep my anxiety in check because I recognize that fear triggers all forms of my hoarding. And by talking myself through the process and recognizing that I don't have to fear inflation because we've been decluttering and organizing and seeing how much school supply stuff is already in this bin. I don't need to fear it and I don't need to hold on to it even longer than I need to. I'm going to use it now. So I'm going to grab my back to school list. Now this is Tyler's back to school list. I don't have Brandon's because he's going into high school and they didn't give one out, but honestly, most of the stuff is on their laptop. So what I'm going to do is just shop from my hoarded stash. I'm going to see what I have. And as I do this, I'm going to be in a abundant mind state because hoarding is very much the scarcity mindset. There's not enough. I have to hold on to every single thing. And to combat that, what I do is I be in an abundant state by feeling abundant, knowing that I don't have to worry because I already have more than enough stuff. A matter of fact, I have so much stuff that I can give a lot of this stuff away to the local back to school charities that are going on right now. So by recognizing that I'm that abundant to provide for my family and to help other families that could use that help too, that brings so much peace over my heart. And when I feel peaceful and happy and bliss, my fear and anxiety does not exist. And I'm also recoding my nervous system to recognize that using up what I have and giving away what I already have is good for me and i'm still safe abundant and happy and after shopping my hoarded office supply stash i recognize that i got mostly everything off of the list so i don't have to go to the store and buy a whole bunch of stuff and worry about spending $600 on each child for back to school supplies. Well, that thing included clothes too. And we'll do a big Kamari method on the clothes as well too. But for now, we're focusing on the school supplies. So now we're going to head to Target to finish our back to school shopping list. And we're going to make sure that we stay focused <laughs> and only buy what's on the list. And for me, and probably a majority, of that sometimes that can be a little challenging all right so I wonder how some of these youtubers do it because it's like 
I'm getting like so distracted, right? Because when you're trying to like film yourself with a selfie stick and a mic, people stop and look at you. And it's not so much that I'm like really embarrassed by it. It's more that I'm too distracted to focus on what I want to tell you guys. <laughs> that's more of my issue but as I'm here the more I'm looking around my shopaholic kind of like impulses are starting to come back and I many of you know I am a recovering shopaholic but it doesn't mean that those triggers and those addictions ever go away it means I have to monitor those behaviors and maybe go through Target faster than I should because I don't have anyone with me to kind of like pull me aside and be like, okay, time to go, time to go. You don't need that. I kind of have two hours to myself here. So <laughs> with that said, let's get shopping. So this part is my ADHD because many of you know that my love for journaling with pretty notebooks and pens and everything kind of triggers that shopaholic addiction side to me. And I'm sitting here telling you how I'm nervous about inflation, yet to calm down those fears, I will shop to also self-soothe that. It's kind of a vicious cycle, but honestly, all it is is me trying to self-soothe and calm myself down. So now, what do I do when I see all the pretty things here that I would love to buy? Well, the thing that helped me recover the first time from being a shopaholic in my 20s is that I heard a speech on where the dopamine rush hit you in the anticipation of buying the item. That is when the dopamine levels are at your highest. And by the time you go to the register and check out, your levels are already more than halfway dropped. And by the time you're home, it's completely gone. That's why they say sleep on it, wait till the next day and see if you still feel the same way about it because 90% of the time you do not. However, right now that dopamine rush is hitting me like crazy. And all of this fun back to school supplies is bringing me back to my childhood because hello, I had Lisa Frank, the best <laughs> back to school supplies ever. And it brought me so much happiness. That's why it's triggering me to want to rebuy this stuff. But you know what? I am recovered enough to be able to put this back because honestly, another little girl who's back to school shopping is going to find this and think it's the coolest thing she's ever had. And she's going to have wonderful memories about her little popsicle highlighters. So now I have to refocus. And the reason why we are here is because we are shopping the rest of Tyler's back to school supplies. Now he needed a little handheld pencil sharpener and they're only 65 cents. So, okay, that doesn't seem bad at all. I can afford 65 cents pencil sharpener. A matter of fact, I know at our local back to school supply drive, they actually needed pencil sharpeners. So I'm going to buy them some too because I'm in this abundant stage that I can not only buy some for Tyler, but also for other children too. But again, ADHD, let's refocus on what we're here for. Now, Tyler needs a half inch binder. I didn't have one at home. And here's one right here, perfect. He also needs a composition book. They're only 50 cents. That doesn't seem that crazy to me. And his favorite color is actually yellow. So that's the one that we'll get for him. Now, Tyler did need new folders because last year's were like busted up and they're only like 50 cents. And each teacher this year had asked each subject to be a certain color. So they have it. They have orange, they have yellow, they have green, and and they have blue. So this is easy for me to just pick up at an incredibly affordable price. So it looks like I forgot to get the red folder. Now, I don't know if this is an ADHD thing, but I have always skipped that next sentence after the title, which was normally the directions. <laughs> I've done that my entire life. I don't know if that's an ADHD thing or an everybody thing, but I just figured I'd put it out there. And last on the list were these special erasable pens. And I'm not gonna make a big stink about that they're like five, six bucks because we already had half the school supplies at home. What I bought was so incredibly affordable. So if his math teacher wants $6 pens, then I will get the $6 dollar pens. We're living in an abundance mindset. <laughs> All right, well, we're leaving Target. It's a little loud out here because they're doing some construction over there, but 
were leaving and we did really, really good. And I'm really proud of myself because I didn't go crazy. <laughs> so I can't wait to get home and show you what we got. So here is my Target receipt and all I spent was $14.10. That's all I spent in school supplies for Tyler. Like that's so awesome because we already had a lot of stuff. Some of his last year things were in good condition so we could reuse it. So now I'm feeling good. I'm not feeling scared. I don't have to be terrified and hoard to calm myself down from the big, bad, scary inflation monster. <laughs> I can reprogram my nervous system that I'm already abundant. So I don't need to hoard and hide and squirrel things away. And I don't need to impulse shop to self-soothe when those fears and anxieties arise too. It also helps that I have my little pepper girl with me to remind me how important it is to just relax and enjoy the present moment. And my hope and my prayer is that this video helped you with coping with your fears, your anxieties, with inflation, and hopefully just bringing a little more peace into your heart and just recognizing how blessed we already are.